Hey everyone, I'm Trading Man Dan, trader and technical analyst with the Chart Guys. If you told me that NVDA was going to drop 7% and that Apple and Amazon would both be down over 2% at one point today and that SPY was going to close flat, I'd say you're crazy. But there's rotation going on and we're going to check in on the markets and see where we stand. MSOS bulls got their break. AI with the daily high or low. Let's hunt some setups. Get it? Because of the hat? Hunt? Setups? All right, so the past few days have been a bit hectic as far as back and forth, a decent amount of volatility, and we are patiently waiting for a tightening range to break. And that tightening range for me is on the NASDAQ futures chart. It's important to distinguish the differences between the futures charts and the ETFs. If you look at SPY on the daily chart, we have a daily uptrend confirmed. If you look at ES, which is the futures chart, we do not. I use SPX 500 USD because that's the free version that everybody can see without paying for data of the futures chart. But again, we don't have a daily uptrend confirmed, which is why it's important to be watching the futures chart because there's more data. There's more trading hours that are present there. And we rejected today right from that level where if you're only watching SPY, it was a break with no follow through uh, and a bit deceiving. So what I'm watching is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is key. And we held the low of Friday at the low of today. And it was a big dump with the NVDA free fall. I was very surprised with the NVDA bear reaction because we got a heads up over the weekend that, you know, hey, a bearish headline's coming. And then to see that kind of reaction when the bearish headline does come, uh, well, that perhaps explains why there was a V-shaped bounce to a certain degree. We'll check in on NVDA in just a moment. But the way that I'm viewing this chart on the NASDAQ futures is resistance, low of Friday, lower high, double bottom with Friday, and then even the bounce today just rejected right from the high of yesterday. And we're just tightening up. It's an equilibrium. And so we're going to look for a higher low compared to the low of yesterday. And we're going to look for a break. And it's either going to be a bull break to try and see daily uptrend continuation or a bear break to set the weekly lower high. And that's really what's at stake right now. We're either going to see another leg up or weekly lower highs set. And again, today was just a lot of rotation going on. And while the NASDAQ was dumping because of semiconductors, growth names, IWM, ARKK, AI, PLTR, a bunch of these names were seeing strength. So NVDA, big time dump, definitely frustrating. I was a day early looking for my short swing and didn't get a good one one day early. It's the way it goes sometimes, but big time drop. Look at the stair step. Stair step marked the low on both QQQ and NVDA into the V-shaped bounce. Again, get familiar with stair step strategies. They are good ones in extremes when things are cascading uh, in different directions. And Jungle Funk Joey just did a webinar where he talks about that trading strategy, and that's on our YouTube playlist, probably lessons and more. So NVDA from here, tightening hourly range. So low, high, trying for a higher low. I was attempting to short NVDA on the bounce and did get stopped out. I was attempting back here, got stopped out. Got a little bit to go back to break even. I haven't had flow this week. I shorted Riot. This was a really nice five minute lower high on Riot that I shorted. Uh, but overall, I'm focusing on swing trades and Again, I'm waiting for a bit more direction because the market is clearly balancing out right now. And what it is, is it's a balance between supply and demand. The last three days are finding that balance as the equilibrium tightens up. And MSOS is a really good example of that uh, from the, we'll get, we'll get to there in a second. Uh, so Netflix earnings and Tesla earnings are tomorrow. Tesla is just the weekly equilibrium. It's gonna break on earnings most likely, and that will give us direction. And just wanna make a note on Netflix. I was looking in uh, today and, and realizing, you know, Netflix has lost its correlation with QQQ. And it makes sense. Netflix was, during the CVID dump and bounce, Netflix was the sixth largest holding in QQQ. And right now it's like the 16th or 17th. Someone did a really good job of balancing Netflix to not let it crash QQQ during this dump. Uh, and essentially making it way less important than it used to be. It's almost like, you know, they capitalized on that move up and then uh, significantly decreased those holdings. 
And so whoever, do, whoever did that at the NASDAQ, well done, because uh, that was really good balancing going on. And so Netflix, we'll see what earnings give us, but it's a three-month equilibrium, and we're scouting a three-month high or low is most likely eventually. And there's another name, BA, is in a forever three-month equilibrium. This is going to break sometime in the coming year or two. But when it does, watch for that follow-through. So healthcare had the daily uptrend confirmed, no real follow through. So still just puttering around, not really sure here and not really a factor. Uh, but one thing we can say is it's a daily uptrend confirmed with zero follow through at the moment. The financial sector, one thing I did this morning is I exited my SQQQ hedge in my IRA into the weakness, which was a good decision, but I switched it for XL or for FAZ, bearish XLF position. And that didn't work out. I would have been better off, much better off just staying all bull on the morning. But I was looking for an inverse relationship to perhaps present itself and for XLF uh, to see weakness here. But that wasn't the case. But I do still have a little bit of a bearish position, just giving the bears a chance to confirm an hourly downtrend tomorrow. Because again, it's just knowing a weekly lower high is the most likely scenario and just watching for it to be set. That said... There's a bunch of names that are looking for longer term higher lows and equilibriums. And right now we have a 62% bounce retracement on XLF and XLF is trying to form a monthly higher low. I'm just viewing this as a tightening range over the last you know, year and a half. And anything above 3012 is a monthly higher low. And how these tightening ranges break are going to have significant implications. And it's both this and XLV. XLV is a two month equilibrium that has been tightening up for a year and a half, more than that. And so again, both XLF, IWM, and XLV, all three are going to break these tightening ranges sometime in the next few months. And it's gonna have significant implications as to whether the broader market is a cup and handle on the monthly or setting a three month lower high for uh, an equilibrium. And the, the simple statement is the burdens on bears on these patterns because they are higher lows. I mean, it's the, the XLV bears must take out 122.11 for a bear break, and the XLF bears must take out 30.11 for the bear break, 30.12. So again, it all depends on what time frame you're looking at. As we talked about yesterday, monthly uptrends, weekly downtrends, daily uptrends, they were hourly downtrends at that point. And so again, I can just, it's, there, there are two paths here that so easily can develop, which is why I do not have conviction over which of the two is going to happen. It is anybody's game. And how these equilibriums break on XLF and XLV and IWM are going to be key. And just checking in on the long-term IWM, again, it's just sideways here. It's, it's a year and a half of sideways. Low, high, higher, low, double top, higher, low, triple top. And now holding support again, 167.53. Can the bull set another monthly higher low and keep tightening up? First things first, we got to change the daily trend. We did double bottom at support. IWM was a clear lead bull today but we've got to break 177.23. And right now what we've seen is the NASDAQ confirmed a daily uptrend first, then XLF and IWM did it. The question now is, do the laggards join? Does IWM do it? Does ARKK do it? ARKK double bottom to daily support. The bulls have to get over 40.81 to prove anything. There's still work to do. They're not proving anything unless that resistance breaks. But again, we're watching for it. And if the rotation's gonna remain healthy, and if the bulls are going to continue to keep control on this monthly bull flag, uh, these sectors need to join in. And then the other sectors like XLP. XLP is trying to confirm the daily uptrend. I don't know what that was. What did that say? XLP is trying to confirm a daily uptrend. We know XLU had been really beaten up. It hasn't topped out on its bounce yet. So again, it's, it's one by one. And if you're a bear, you want to see the major names dump. You want to see the NASDAQ leading the way to the downside. And you want to see all major sectors hitting the lows together. That is fear 101. And if you have days like today where NVDA, Apple, Amazon, they're all dropping hard, but other things are going up, you see what SPY did. SPY closed flat. Again, it's a, it's a huge win for me for the SPY bulls to close flat, knowing what NVDA, Apple, and Amazon looked like this morning. MSOS, we knew the break was coming. So sideways range. And again, it's just the perfect balancing of scales. So supply is outweighing demand for weeks. And then we get to this battle and it's just doing this 
and they don't stay that way. We're either doing this or this, and demand exceeded supply today. There was a little bit of a catalyst with the House Speaker vote, but this was a technical move. That was just a little bit of a reason for the technical move. But the weekly higher low is set. Been talking about building my swing position back at the seven dollar range, and you know, you go back to watch the cannabis videos over the last three weeks. Back when we were up here, I was talking about I'm looking to reload at weekly EMA 12 and just had to patiently wait for it. Did take a tiny bit of profit today, 10%, just to uh, get remind myself that a weekly lower high is the most likely scenario. But we must break the high of today tomorrow, 756, to follow through here. So that's going to be important for me as well. If we don't, I'm probably going to take a bit more profit off. Uh, and I want to get into a risk-free position. I, if I, I want to sell enough. Ideally in the upper $7 range, but I want to sell enough where I just put my stop under 675 and I don't risk anything. You know, I want my break even. You know, if my starting position is $7, if I sell half at 735, I'm risk free with a stop under the low. But I don't want to sell it all just yet or sell half just yet. I'd like to see a little bit more upside and, and not have to sell as much to get risk free. But a weekly lower high is the most likely scenario. CCJ bulls caught me off guard today. I've been scouting the weekly high or low in uranium names as well. And the CCJ bulls just put on a show. Uh, so low, high, higher, low, and a, a double top at resistance. Bulls are definitely going to be watching for an hourly higher low to be the result of consolidation. But watching to see if these uranium names can set that weekly higher low as well. AI daily higher low set in a big way. So still in the partial swing position. I didn't have confidence to to reload what I sold on this day, but uh, I've got, again, same thing, stop under the low, risk-free, unless there's a big bear news gap down. And so if the bulls can get over 27.50, we confirm the daily uptrend, and that's the first baby step towards a monthly higher low trying to be set, which is the reason I got interested in this trade. I, I got interested in this trade because, again, it's, I can just recognize supply exceeding demand for weeks, and then the scale's just balancing out. And so watching for the skills to tilt. That's why we seek those tightening ranges. The dollar daily lower high is set. Bears must break 105.53 to confirm the first daily downtrend since this move got going. It's a potential head and shoulders. Prove it, bears. Take out that support. US 10 year is much stronger than the dollar testing the high, not confirming the daily downtrend. That is one point in the favor of the bear column in the broader market. The fact that the 10 year is still real strong up the high and the bears failed to confirm a daily downtrend. Metals still strong. Daily, second daily inside bar in a row for gold. Silver got a bull break to a higher high. So a new bounce high on silver. No red flags in the metals. And again, the metal bulls really want to see the dollar confirm that downtrend. Oil, keeping a close eye here. Uh, if I'm a bear, I want to see a break of the high of yesterday with zero follow through to try and start shaping up a rising wedge. So resistance is going to be 88.33, not losing sight that we are in a daily uptrend. And again, I can't let a bias be too significant here. I'm not going to assume that a bull break is going to lack follow through. I'm going to be watching for it and watching for that weekly lower high. And the energy sector way stronger than oil today uh, and heading back up to its resistance zone. And natural gas still struggling for the daily high or low, watching for it to be set today or tomorrow, or I guess tomorrow or Thursday. And then again, we got the space for the daily lower high to be the result of that next bounce from here. Bulls have to confirm the four hour uptrend, which they have failed to do. So watch the rotation. If you're a bear, you want the dollar to head back to a higher high. You want the 10 year to hit a higher high. You want all major sectors hitting the lows together because right now the bulls are pleased with the rotation that is going on. And so the bears need to spoil that confidence and watch the NASDAQ three-day tightening range that if it doesn't break tomorrow during regular trading hours, could easily be Netflix and Tesla that dictate the direction that it does break. But I'm going to say burden on bears. Well, burden on bulls in, I, in IWM, ARKK, AI, burden on bears in everything else to set weekly lower highs. And remember how that's changed. Last week we were saying burden on bulls, XLF, XLV, confirm a daily uptrend and join the NASDAQ. And they have done that. So now the burden is on bears in those names to prove to us that weekly lower highs are being set. 
one day at a time, waiting for a bit more clarity for sure. Um, a few good things.